Lauren, and I'm a petroleum engineering student at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also a summer intern for Key Energy Services. I want to introduce you to my learning modules about my intern experience and some of the other things that I've learned. The main learning objectives for this module are list the five stages of the life of a well, state two differences between drilling and workover rig, and name three parts of a drilling rig and three parts of a workover rig. Let's start by describing the process of drilling a well. First, a drilling rig is used to drill the well. Next, casing is put in place for support and is then surrounded with cement for additional support and to protect the water zone. Lastly, a workover rig is used to place tubing or piping in the well bore. The first step in the life of a well is drilling. The second step is completion, where the casing and cement are set into place. Well maintenance is an ongoing process that could continue for months, years, or even decades. Next, the well is sometimes recompleted and moved to another zone. Lastly, the well is plugged and abandoned so there can be no further use. There are many types of different rigs with different tasks. However, most rigs are used for drilling and maintenance of a well. While some rigs are best at drilling, others are best for servicing a well. A drilling rig is defined as a machine that creates holes, called boreholes, in the ground to drill for oil and gas. A workover rig is defined as a rig used to perform one or a variety of operations on a producing well to try to increase production. A drilling rig is carried in pieces on many trucks and set up at the rig site. The workover rig shown here is mobile and set on the back of a truck and is in the process of getting rigged up. Rigs can be put into many categories, but the two main groupings I'll talk about are onshore versus offshore and drilling versus workover rigs. I thought it was interesting that drilling rigs can be either onshore or offshore, and so can workover rigs. Now let's compare some of the basics of drilling and workover rigs. Drilling rigs are set up almost completely straight into the sky with only 0 to 1 degrees of tilt. Workover rigs are set up at a slight angle of 3 to 5 degrees. Drilling rigs also have much more strength, with horsepower that could triple or more the horsepower of a workover rig. While drilling and workover rigs can be used on the same wells, they're needed at different times. You may be wondering when drilling rigs and workover rigs are needed. Well, drilling rigs are mostly needed at the very beginning of the well's life during the drilling stage and part of the completion stage. Workover rigs are needed after the well has already been drilled and are used to maintain, recomplete, and plug and abandon wells. Although there are several differences between drilling and workover rigs, one of the most notable is the distinct difference in power level. A drilling rig can exert power up to 2,500 horsepower and beyond while a workover rig maxes out around 1,000 horsepower. Also, drilling rigs are used on new wells, and workover rigs are used on existing wells, primarily for maintenance. This diagram shows some of the major parts of a drilling rig, including the crown at the very top, the derrick, the drill pipe, which is run into the well, the lifting hook that lifts drill pipe and other items out of the well, the block, and the substructure for support. Here are some basic facts about drilling rigs. First, they are most commonly used to drill new wells or to deepen old wells. Drilling rigs can be found onshore and offshore in a variety of sizes. They have very high power levels, and interestingly, they can be used to drill vertically and horizontally. Two major types of drilling rigs are top drive and standard. Both top drive and standard rigs can have a rotary table, but top drive rigs do not require one. While both types have swivels, top drive rigs are newer and more efficient. Standard rigs are still the most common type of drilling rig. Now let's focus on workover rigs. This diagram shows the different parts of a workover rig. At the very top is the crown, and the structure is the derrick. The structure hanging off the right side is known as the tubing board. A workover rig also has a block, just like a drilling rig. 
the motor runs the rig, and the guy lines and load lines are used for support. Workover rigs are primarily used after initial drilling has already occurred. I found it interesting that they can also be used for horizontal drilling and are commonly called service rigs or well servicing rigs because their main purpose is the maintenance of a well. There are four major types of workover rigs, standard, swab rig, pole rig, and continual rod unit. Now, let's review what we've learned. The five stages to the life of a well are drill, complete, maintain, recomplete, and plug and abandon. The major differences between a drilling and workover rig are when to use them, the degree of tilt, and the amount of horsepower they exert. Some parts of a drilling rig are the crown, derrick, drill pipe, traveling block, substructure, and lifting hook. And lastly, some parts of a workover rig are the crown, derrick, tubing board, motor, block, guy line, and load line. Thank you for watching the Rigs 101 part of my journey. I hope you learned something useful. See you next time.